Worldwide demand for prawns has grown to staggering proportions in recent years. But the supply of this tasty crustacean, both from nature and from farm harvests, has not been enough to meet the demand. Prawn farmers face the problem of insufficient supply of prawn fry for stocking. Because of this, entrepreneurs are putting up prawn hatcheries. Wild Pineus monodon spawners and adult but sexually immature females, including mature males, are caught by trawlers, fish corals, and sign nets. Unlike Pineus japonicus prawns, wild spawners of the Pineus monodon species are caught in small numbers. This shortage of spawners has been a setback in the production of P. monodon fry in hatcheries. To meet this need, the CIFTEC Aquaculture Department initiated studies on gonadal maturation of P. monodon in land-based maturation tanks and maturation pens in protected marine environments. Maturation is induced by the ablation method or removal of one eye of the immature female before stocking in maturation tanks. A ratio of one female to one male and a stocking density of two animals per cubic meter in the tanks are followed. Maturation of the female usually occurs five to seven days after ablation. Gravid or mature prawns that show stage three and four development normally spawn late at night or early morning. An indication of spawning is the appearance of yellowish-orange scum attached to the walls of the tank or on the water surface. The eggs hatch to nuplai 12 to 15 hours after spawning. The nuclear stage goes through six developmental substages before it molds to the protozoal stage. The protozoa stage goes through three developmental substages in three to five days before molting to the mice stage. The mice stage also goes through three moltings before becoming a post larva. Nuplai are harvested from the spawning tank at the nucleus three or nucleus four substage. About 50,000 to 100,000 nuplai are stocked per ton of water. Nucleus subsists on its own yolk and does not take any food. While the protozoa feeds on unialgal or mixed cultures of diatoms or commercially available diets. Mices feed on algae, rotifers, brine shrimp nuplai and commercially available micro particulate feeds. Post larvae feed on brine shrimp nuplai, finely ground mussel meat, and trash fish and commercially prepared diets. Unialgal cultures of diatoms such as Skeletonema or Chytoceros or other algae are cultured separately from the larvae and must be programmed to provide continuous supply of natural food. Good quality of the rearing water is essential for the successful larval rearing operations. Deterioration of water is prevented by changing the water daily at 30 to 50 percent of the volume two to three days after stocking of the nuplai. The water source must be free of polluents such as agricultural runoff or industrial or domestic waste. Seawater salinity must be between 28 and 34 parts per thousand. Water source must also be far from big river systems to have minimum fluctuations in salinity. At 20 to 25 days after the animals molt to the post larva stage, they are ready to be stocked in ponds. Harvesting is done by first draining out water until the remaining water is just about 30 centimeters deep. 
a harvesting box is fitted to the outlet of the larval tank. Then the drain pipe is removed. The box serves to retain the fry and juveniles while the water is being drained. The fry retained in the harvest box are then transferred into basins. Harvested fry in the basins are then placed in plastic bags with 8 to 10 liters of seawater. The plastic bag is oxygenated and placed in styrofoam boxes, pandan bags or jute sacks. A survival rate of 70 to 85 percent can be expected from hatchery bread fry stocked directly in well-prepared grow-out ponds following proper acclimation procedures before stocking. In 105 to 120 days, these same fry will reach marketable size and will be ready for the domestic and export markets. <laughs>